Hello and welcome to what is actually our first webinar for this year, and, and actually one that takes a slightly different, uh, a different approach to our usual industry-specific ones for this session. Uh, we're going to be taking a look at all things data analytics. We're going to be discussing why it's important, uh, how and where it can be applied, and what we at IIR are doing to support our clients and customers in this space. My name is Shaheen Chahan. Uh, I head up IIR's global analytics capability. And to help me navigate through this session, I'm actually delighted to be joined by our director of North American analytics, Emeka Akapunu. Uh, Emeka runs our team of data modelers and data scientists, and uh, he's based in our Texas head office. So I think really when we get started, I think that the, the big question is, so why data analytics? Well, why do we bother? Um, well, I think when we've, we've looked at the, 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 the data that we've seen come out of uh, Davos and, and the, the, the forecast that we've seen uh, pre presented, uh, I think that 2019 is really going to be a year where we head back to a global outlook, which is going to be characterized by a certain degree of uncertainty and volatility. And we've already seen many economists are projecting a softer year ahead. Many of the previous positive uh, tailwinds that we've seen since 2017 have unfortunately diminished. And we've also seen some of those legacy headwinds from last year uh, remain unresolved. And, and certainly many of these have carried over into this year. But what we do know uh, is that markets and those who operate in them, you know, ultimately learn how to evolve and adapt. And those who can really do that faster and smarter. Uh, are typically those equipped with the right market intelligence and insights and and we find that those who have that at their disposal can certainly turn what may first appear as a headwind into possible opportunities yes um i do agree shine but i would like to add that it's not always just about you know using data analytics to navigate around headwinds um, in fact many of our cli clients um, come to us to help them as part of their strategy planning cycles or to support them during a key initiative, such as um, a new product development, um, uh, a major acquisition, or if they need to get a fresh health check on the market. And what we often find, you know, is quite interesting that regardless of which initiative we are being asked to support, the questions are fundamentally the same. Clients want to know where is the market today, where is it going tomorrow based on trends we are seeing, um, which market should I be in that I'm not already in and just what is driving the markets I am in or wish to be in. Good point. So I guess really it's, well, why us? I, I, I personally, I think we at, in IIR are in a good position uh, to help our clients build those greater levels of insights into uh, the evaluations and assessments of their markets. And it's really all about bringing three very unique components together that we have at our disposal. And this includes obviously starting with our data uh, and then the ability to feed this huge range of project, plant, unit, and equipment data uh, that's obviously all generated and verified direct from source by telephone into uh, our modeling capabilities and then delivering these insights generated uh, via multiple and, and customized uh, delivery mechanisms, whether that's more traditional quarterly reports or more real-time online Tableau dashboards or indeed via direct data feeds that go directly into uh, an end user's internal models and tools. So I just want to come back to the data because really that's the feedstock that we've got. Um, when we talk about building those customized analysis for a, for a customer, it's really about bringing together multiple data types, whether there are that is our, you know, our plant, unit, or equipment, or, or indeed our project data, and then the various data sets and the various spending indicators uh, and indices uh, that we have uh, to really produce what, what we term uh, you know, different views or certainly put different lenses across the market. And, and the, you know, the customizable part of this is, is really all about combining uh, those different uh, sets of data and then the analysis that gets generated together uh, and, and build a picture that closely aligns to how a customer actually defines his or her market. Now, Mecca, I, I want to shift 
very quickly into the core of this presentation, the, the predictive analytics piece. And I wanted to talk a little bit about uh, the work you and your team have been doing in building greater levels of predictability into the analysis uh, and, and the tools that we've been producing. Uh, can you give us your sort of two minute view of, of an, an explanation of what we mean by predictive analytics? Sure, Shaheen. So um, over the past decade, we've made the journey to enhance our analytics offerings from descriptive analytics, which answers questions such as what is happening or what has happened, to diagnostic analytics, which is where we layer in over 30 years of market insight and research experience to answer questions such as why is this or that happening. And as we've continued to evolve and gather more data and market intelligence, we are now better equipped, perhaps more than ever before, um, to apply machine learning to predict what is likely to happen, and that's that predictive analytics. Ultimately, this enables us readily answer client questions such as um, those displayed at the bottom corner of the screen here. Um, can you go to the next slide, please? So building greater levels of predictability and hence more certainty into our forecasting is really the ultimate goal. Um, to accomplish this, we take a granular bottom-up approach, which involves scenario-based learning models to predict on an individual project basis the likelihood of a project kicking off according to its planned schedules. And this involves modeling what we've seen occurring from historical spending trends and patterns based on different scenarios and different sets of input variables to see how different types of projects have reacted and responded against different sets of situations. So we then apply these models to live and active projects. So we, we hereby you know, blend in both that modeled project probabilities together with the probabilities assigned by our experts um, based on telephone surveys and their market knowledge to create a new predictive probability. And this is now being put into each of our 169,000 individual project reports, as well as into our various forecast tools and um, products. So Mecca, that all sounds uh, well and good, uh, but from an end user's perspective, what have we uh, seen or what can they expect to see in terms of benefits uh, from the work that you've been doing specifically around this sort of predictive space? Mm. Well, um, an obvious and rather instant benefit is that the client now is able to enjoy more certainty and more accuracy in our forecast products. And this is a natural trickle down effect from the predictive analytics done on our individual project reports. So in essence, clients can be much more efficient with the uh, strategic planning, prospecting, and sales processes, and overall, just much more efficient and effective in how they monitor and prioritize opportunities. Thanks for the explanation, Emeka. What, what I wanted to do is sort of take possibly a, a step back, uh, and I wanted to really just start by showing what is a single view of, uh, of the three service offerings that we have within uh, Mark, uh, IIR's market analytics, and, and there on the right, we have our Outlook products, which are typically short-term views across a driven market. They can be highly customized to include, uh, as you saw previously on a slide, the, 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 a combination of different segmentations and, and use of different data sets or spending indices and indicators, uh, really depending on how you size or, or, or analyze your market. Uh, and then we have the data feeds, which is a relatively new product offering that we've got. And that's really all about taking different uh, data sets that we have and, and includes the indices or the indicators that we, we, we produce uh, and feed that directly into an end user's internal analytics tools, whether that's uh, Tableau or, or Power BI or any internal uh, tools and solutions that they have. Now, going back now, Emeka, to the, to the predictive modeling that you do, my, my first assumption is that um, we pretty much find this embedded in the forecast products. Is, is that correct? Or where else are we seeing it in, in, in the products and services that we've got to offer? Oh, yes, um, that's correct in part. But bear in mind that each of the 169,000 individual projects that we track has this new predictive probability built into it. So in essence, all of our products now have a lot more precision and certainty built into them. Um, perhaps you could permit me to show some product examples, Shane. So um, this here is a five-year global industrial forecast of project spending by industry and region. 
uh, it utilizes the predictions of individual project probabilities. Um, this is shown here in our proprietary tool, the IIR analyzer. However, it is fully customizable and can be delivered in a multitude of other formats, including our Tableau dashboards, Microsoft Power BI, spreadsheets, or data feeds. Um, we find that most subscribers use this product to, um, you know, for strategic planning purposes, to identify where their markets are going and which markets they should aim to be in. Next slide. And here is a, one of our custom label analysis products. Um, so in this customized label analytics product, we were taxed by a client to predict industrial labor demand, supply, wage rates, and per diem um, under seven different market scenarios over the next two years. Shane, could you flick onto the next visual that shows the wage? Yeah, thank you. So the client is using this tool to analyze um, and to schedule their own project activities in a more effective manner um, to minimize costs as the overall objective. Uh, next slide. And now I'd like to discuss our refinery turnaround and maintenance forecast. So this is um, our refinery turnaround model, which combines future verified unit turnaround events with predicted unit turnaround. So thanks to our extensive refinery outage database, we are able to predict turnaround activity at the unit by unit level within a refinery. The output is on spend counts and offline capacity in barrels per day of crude gasoline and um, distillate. I'm sure, could you flick on to the next visual to show the model inputs? Yeah, thank you. So the probability of each predicted turnaround is also stipulated. Um, at the little inset by the bottom right corner of your screen, you can see some key variables that um, we use for making these predictions. Uh, this includes the time since the last one around on the unit, refinery margins, the owner history, and so on. This particular product uh, is updated every quarter. We observe that many companies use this tool in multiple ways, including um, to identify opportunities to offer services to refineries that are going to turn around to help schedule the turnaround during a period of greater labor availability in order to minimize costs. Some clients focus more on the capacity forecast to anticipate changes in the supply of refined products um, such as gasoline and distillate. So in summary, I would say um, the common theme in each of the sample predictive um, products I've shown you so far today are threefold. One, we utilize Industrial Info's extensive high quality data Two, we apply machine learning and analytics. And finally, we blend in insights from our researchers and experts and over 30 years of market intelligence. And all this helps our clients make smarter, faster, fact-based decisions. Great, thanks Emeka uh, for that sort of conclusion and summation. And, uh, and certainly thanks for taking time to talk us through some of the products that uh, you and the team are working on and more importantly showcasing uh, some of these projects. Um, obviously, if uh, you know you're open for um, it, you know requests, we you know we really do customize an awful lot of the the predictive tools and the forecasting tools that you're currently working on, really to try and tailor those to very specific and and, and niche uh, requirements. So, big thanks, Emeka, for for taking the time out today. Now, um, we will be conducting further webinars throughout the course of this quarter, so please. Do uh, join me for those and the next one that we'll be hosting is actually back to our industry outlooks and we're going to be talking about the global mining and metals markets and uh, the, the planned spending over the next 24 months globally uh, and this is going to be held this Thursday so please do tune in and once again Emeka thank you uh, and for those on the call thanks for joining uh, have a good day goodbye